what what I'm telling you. Okay, so just to go back here and make sure everyone understands this exercise, you're doing you're going to be handing in three drawings, three drawings of sofas, but they're going to be drawn directly onto your templates, and the templates not only give you the size of the room, but they also give you the scale of the box that you're going to build the sofa onto. So even though in the videos it's showing you how to construct the room and, and asking you to just estimate the depth of the sofa, we've chosen to do a little more work, go a little deeper, and actually figure out how to make the depth measurable. And so that's the big difference between what you're seeing in the videos that are on YouTube and the ones that I've put in Slate for you, that I embedded in Slate for you. It's in Slate content for week uh, three, I think, or week four, I'm not sure, maybe four, week three. It's, yeah, it's week four exercise. Oh. I have a question about that. Uh, hold, maybe um, hold on to your question. Be, so, so here are the two um, videos. They're in Slate content for week four, exercise three. And don't just watch the first one. You have to watch the second one because that's the one that shows you how to draw the box for the sofa, okay? Oh gosh, I can't get rid of this. So that's, those are the two, the two that you're going to look for. So we're making this a more complex situation of measurement so that we'll transition into the two-point perspective, working on a grid more easily. That's the whole purpose here. And we've taken out the extra work of the fireplaces so that this amount of work will be worthy of 25 marks. So that's a lot of marks. That's 25% of your grade. So, so I've met, as I've mentioned here, the videos for that are in week four. And then these are the the YouTube videos, and once again, they just show you how to detail the box you already have after you work with these two videos, or just simply, if you can remember, recall what we did in class, reproduce that three times. And every time you do it, it will become easier and more clear what you need to do. And it'll get faster. So the first one may be a little challenging if you don't remember if you've left it this long a whole week and not done it, then it's going to be tricky for you to remember. But once you get on to the second one and the third one, then they'll come more easily. So I have a question. Um, could you hold it till I finish with this? Okay. okay. So now the what you could require to give, and this is very, very important is one PDF file, just one. You're going to combine your three drawings, three sofa, three templates, box included, with the sofa detailed over top. You're gonna to leave all of your template lines that are drawn in colored pencil, so that when we, I'll show you how to use your line techniques to draw your sofa over top. If you don't know how to combine and make one PDF, then you need to contact these folks at service desk and they're going to help you. They'll explain how to do it. You just tell them what computer you're working with and what software you're using and they're going to help you do that. Okay. Make sure your photos are very clear. This one is definitely challenging because you've got colored pencil lines and eventually you're going to have some nice thick black lines but we also want to be able to see your colored pencil lines. So you do need to, to photograph this in daylight. Now you do have until 10 p.m. On, uh, on Tuesday next week, week six. This I cannot accept late under any circumstances. This is something that's due in week six and nothing can be accepted late. 
week six because of midterm grades. I have to have time to mark everything and get your midterm grade up. So just be, be forewarned about that. We don't have the usual week leeway. So here's how the marks break down. Here's three sofa hand-drawn templates. So no tracing, no copying, just draw them three times. And again, this is worth 15 marks. So if I see that they're not done this way, you're going to lose a lot of marks. So be really be conscientious about this. You'll benefit in the end. Do it for yourself because you're going to be benef you're going to benefit. Next week will be when we come back next week and when we come back well, after break will be much easier for you if you put in the time now. Okay. And then you're going to detail those three given sofas, the ones in the videos, and the ones that I've given you reference pictures for. You're going to detail them over top of the box that you drew when you drew your template. So watch both of those videos. The one is the first half of the drawing, just setting up the room. The second one is how to draw that box using the depth in the room to show you how. Okay, so. And there's also this little, if you get some time, some free time, if you want to uh, practice your rendering with the gray markers, you can go in and do this little exercise, print out that line drawing that I have and do some rendering. That should be, keep your hand in to do that. Now we're going to go next to, this is a very important sheet and I can tell from, um, Looking at your exercises now, I've marked two of them, that not a lot of people are using this and you really, really need to because you can mark your own work in a way just by going down this list before you hand it in. So you're going to hand in three templates with three sofa details drawn over top. So one 11 by 14 inch sheet of paper, whether you have it in the, the in a sketchbook or not, you need a paper that measures 11 by 14 inches because the templates are based on a page that's 11 by 14 inches. So I've given you measurements six inches from the top, so many inches from the inside. And if you're using a different size paper, none of that is going to work. So please be careful that you're using the right size. And you're gonna put everything, the one, one PDF, not three, one, into the Slate Exercise 3 drop box. Okay, don't combine them all into one picture. They have to be three separate pages in a PDF. Three separate pages, not one whole. Don't add any um, front cover sheet or end cover sheet or title page. Don't add any of that. Just when I open it up, I should see your first sofa, then scroll, be able to scroll down and see your second and scroll down and see your third. That's how it should work um, rather than trying to get all four of them on one page and I won't be able to see anything. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And if you don't know how to do that again, get in touch with the IT. This chart is really important. After you find your grade, you read your feedback and look at your grade, then you can come back here and see generally what category of grade you fit under and where you have to focus on improvement, improving. This is all about your templates now. So I'm looking to see that you used your vanishing point and drew everything according that you didn't guess at any of your angles, your receding angles, that all your verticals are straight, you can use your set square. Just line up the edge of your set square with the edge of your paper, and you can easily draw a straight line. Or you can line it up with the bottom of your paper and easily draw a straight line. So if you're challenged in that way, I know that I am, then that's that can be really helpful. And you must complete the drawing. You have to have the floor plan up at the top. Don't forget to detail your floor plan. Don't just leave that box that we drew in class. You really need to go in and make that look like the sofa that you just drew. So that's very important. And you need to add a figure as well. So that's part of it being complete. But that comes later, not on the template, but that comes later when we do our 
details over top. Leave all your inside lines, all your construction lines in colored pencil. And I'm going to be looking at your measurements, your wall measurements, your measuring line and the line across the bottom, making sure those are the same. They're not going to be, though, if you use a paper other than an 11 by 14 inch paper. And your right wall increments, you can judge this yourself. Are they appearing to become larger as they come forward? That's really important. Okay. And now the sofa drawing itself, you're drawing directly on the template. You want to have correct perspective. Of course, if the box is correct, that's going to be correct. Keep your lines vertical and do everything you've been asked to do. And your inside lines, your construction lines remain there. Best to sketch it out with a blue pencil first and then ink it in. And so before you do the punchline technique, outline it with a black marker first. I mean, um, draw it with blue pencil. And then when you do your punchline, you're going to be using black markers. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And we, we want to see your template underneath. And the sofas should look like the sofas you've been given. So they have particular characteristics and details. You want to make sure you've captured those. That's where the YouTube videos come in. They're really only for that. They're not about size at all. They're really mostly about that, getting the breaking that box down and turning it into those sofas. And make sure we drew, we started our drawing with a border. So you should have a border, but you can label your eye level. And if you want to put notes on uh, the measurements that we used against the wall for the seat height and the arm height and the back height, you can. And all of your drawings should have one female figure. And sketch her with a blue pencil first. Um, make her less animated and more elegant than the sketch figures examples that I've given you. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But if you look at these ones, she's celebrating Valentine's Day, isn't she? So we don't want that. We don't want a Valentine's Day celebrant. We want someone, oh boy, that's a little more restrained. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do that with her. There she is, look at that. She's found the guy of her dreams and he doesn't know anything about it yet. Okay, now, and her eyes have to be on the eye level and I'll show you how to do that. And we're gonna outline her in black pen as well. Okay, and we're gonna draw her with our ruler, <laughs> with our ruler or our set square. And don't forget to detail your floor plan. Okay, and that's worth 10% of your mark. So it's 25, it's, it's a big mark. And these are the reasons why you might have a face a reduction in your mark. If you, this can't apply this time. So I should take that out. I'm gonna take that out because you can't hand it in a week late, okay? And if you put, gave me the wrong file, if, well, if you gave me the wrong file, I won't be able to mark it this time because there won't be time to tell you and for you to hand it in late. So that doesn't even really apply. And you have to have a one, one PDF. And if it's photographed poorly and I can't view it, you won't get a grade. And if it appears upside down or sideways, then how am I supposed to mark that? I won't be able to mark that. So in a way, these are all reasons why you wouldn't get a mark at all, because any of these reasons I would have to tell you, you'd have to hand it in late and I could dedu deduct the 20%, but this time I can't, I, my hands are tied. If you don't have it in on time and correct, then you'll miss out on a whole grade. So please uh, be careful about that. Okay, now let's see. What else we've got here? I think we went over all of these. So here's your reference. These are the things that you're drawing. Those are the three. And you're going to do it the way we drew it in class last week. 
with that template and we begin with that box. The fireplaces we're not doing, we may do them another time. And there's our, our sketch figures, but we're just using the lady and we're going to calm her down a little bit. And this is for the rendering, if you choose to do the little rendering for practice. Okay. So I think now, okay, we'll stop now. All right, so this is where we left off last week, and I was showing you very quickly. I put in all my lines, and my lines are not really correct. So that was the purpose of our class today, is for me to look over your templates to do what we did together just a moment ago, which we'll do again after I finish showing you this. And also to talk about your line weights. Now, for everybody else, you're going to be drawing your modifications to the sofa to make it look like the three sofas I gave you, the reference pictures for, and the videos are gonna show you how. Remember, that's the only purpose for the YouTube videos is to show you how to turn your boxes, which don't look like the boxes in the videos, into those particular sofas and with that particular floor plan. Okay, so you're gonna modify your floor plan. But I can't do that because I already put dark lines on here. So I'm going to put a paper over top. You won't, you, you're not going to, just me, because I've already put lines on here. I need to clean them up and show you which ones to make dark, punch line, which is really the silhouette, and which ones to leave light, okay? So do that in a moment. But first of all, what I wanna do is show you the figure, how to put in your figure. Now, we're going to make our figure more elegant. Remember the lady in the picture, our reference, she was a little too active. So we gotta calm her down a little bit, make her a little more elegant because she's not going into a rough drawing anymore. She's going into a refined drawing with, that we've refined with our set squares. So she's gotta behave herself. So now, do you guys want to pull out one of your templates and maybe draw in blue pencil? Or do you wanna put a piece of a marker paper or tracing paper over top so that you can uh, try this as well along with me and see? Okay, now I'm gonna put her next to the sofa because remember her whole purpose in life is to stand by our sofa and show us just how big it is, how big it looks. That's her job. So first thing we have to do is figure out how tall to make her. We already know that her eyes are gonna be on the eye level. So we're gonna draw on a vertical line in between the sofa and the wall. I'm gonna pick halfway, okay? And I'm gonna draw a vertical line in my blue pencil. I'm gonna sketch your blue pencil first. I'm gonna draw a vertical line. I don't know how tall she's gonna be, so I'm gonna give her lots of room to grow. Now, for her eyes to be here, that's half of her head has to be on the eye levels because your eyes are halfway in your head. So what I have to do then is say that she's maybe given her forehead and her hair, she's maybe five foot three or four, something like that. So I'm gonna look at my between five and six feet and pick a, um, let's see, four, three, she, about a third of the distance between five and six. So I'm picking right there. That's about a third of the way between five foot and six feet. So that's, I'm figuring how tall she's going to be. Now, she, if I were to push her against the wall, she would be standing right there against it, right? And that's how I have to measure her. Just the way we had to take the measurements from the wall and move them out into the room. 
I have to do for the seat height and the arm height and the back height. I have to do the same for her. So I'm just going to extend this line. Since she lines up with the sofa, I'm just going to extend this line. And I have to bring that measurement, five foot three or four, I have to bring that over to my line, my measuring line at the same point where she is in the room. So you see how you never have to guess at anything. You don't guess about anything. So there now, I know that she, if she were standing against the wall, would be that tall. But I have to bring her over to where she's actually standing, her height. So her height, now I've got to make this straight. Okay, so I'm gonna bring her over. Make her straight there, straight across there. So that's how tall she's gonna be right there. Okay, that's where her height came from. And she had to go here and here, and then there she is. Now, with my pencil, I'm going to say, okay, that's half her head. So the other half would be here, that's half. I could even measure with the paper. Remember to have lots of scrap papers around so you can measure. Someone's hammering next door. Well, at least they stopped drilling. That was very painful. So I'm gonna put her head in. Now we're gonna go very square with her. So you wanna put her hair fine right at her chin. We're gonna go very squarish with her. I also know about the figure that her legs take up half her body. So if I put the top of my paper with the top of her head and the bottom of her feet here, oops, and fold my paper in half, And I know where half of her is. And I know that half of her is going to be leg. So I'll just put half. And this is equal from here to here is equal. So that's good. So that's half. And I know that um, halfway here, between here and here, is the bottom of her knee. So I'll just fold this in half again. And that's the bottom of her knee. And look, there is the seat of the sofa. And so her bottom of her knee is going to line up with that. Now, remember, we want to make her rather subdued. We don't want her too animated. It's not Valentine's Day anymore. So you want to give her carrots for legs, just like the other, our original lady. She gets carrots for legs. And we've got this much left over, so we'll put her shoulders here. We're going to give her an angle for her shoulders. And her waist will come down about here. We're thinking of her very simply. She's not going to get feet. We'll just put her like this. And we'll put her collar over here so she's standing a little sideways. Now, her waistband would go round this way because she's below eye level. Now, remember, attach the arms at the shoulder. Um, often people don't do that. They attach them. She's getting really skinny here, but that's good. She'll be elegant. Now, elbows are at the waist, so we'll just put that elbow there. And maybe we'll have her holding a book, we'll just sort of indicate her thumb there. We'll have a book, she's holding a book. This will go up this way. When we do our two point perspective, you'll, you'll understand that better. Just, we have to taper her arms though. My, she's got big shoulders. Might take those down a bit. And then here, see, I'm coming out with this arm. 
she's got shorts on right now, but we want to give her a skirt. Elbow at the waist. And the wrist is at the crotch. And you can measure yourself after we're done here or later on and see if I'm telling you things that are true or not. Although I've seen people with their elbows much lower than their waist, so. And much higher, much higher as well. So these are just standard measurements, like the standard measurement for our sofa. Okay, so we've got her in now. And when you outline her, you're going to use your set square or your ruler and just make her simple. I'm gonna bring her closer so I don't get my big head in the way. We want her to be really quite simple. And usually if you just indicate the thumb, that's all you need to do to show that there's a hand there. I don't want this arm sticking out too much. This could just be resting against her leg, maybe. There's a little gap here. I should be, I should have made that angle in more so her arm is getting thinner like that. And there's her skirt. Now the skirt too would be a curve because it's in perspective. So I'm just gonna make it go up at the sides and down at the front. And you wouldn't necessarily indicate details inside very much. and then her leg, so. And the supporting leg, it's generally right under the collarbone. So we'll put her on her supporting leg. So that would be all you'd need to do for her. You don't need to, we don't, all she's there for is for us to say, you know, yeah, that's a that's a full size sofa. It's not a love seat. It's not uh, a toy. It's a, it's a full size sofa. Okay, that's her job. Now, because I have put these dark lines on here, it's the only reason. I'm now going to switch to a piece of marker paper. No, you won't be doing that. So I just want to remind everybody once again that your sofa, all three of them, should come all the way out to three and a half feet, just the way we drew our template in class. The YouTube videos are only for this part, detailing the sofa. That's all it's for. The box, 
you should bring a complete box to the YouTube videos so that you're not doing anything when you get there other than detailing your drawing. Okay, now I think this is big. Is that making sense for everybody that you're just detailing? Now you're not doing this. Remember, you're not doing this. So, so. Now, before I begin though, I have to find markers that will give me three weights of line. Because when you do the punch line, you need thin inside lines, and you need um, an accent line, a weight of accent, and then you also need a punch line. So these black markers, I don't think they're called jet black, but you have a black in, I don't know if you notice, but you have these in your box of gray markers. You should have two of these. And I'm gonna use this for my thick line. my punch line. I like the flexible nib. I like that a lot. So that's why I chose that one. And I've also got this. You've got, um, you've got other things to use. You've got your pigment liners. So maybe your number five would be good here or your even your seven might. But I need a line that's not quite as thick. That's my accent line. And then I need a line that's actually quite thin. Let me see. I've got this other one. Maybe I'll put a little more pressure. See, I'm being very careful with this one, but I'll try putting a little more pressure on it. So it's get a little darker. So there is a difference. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but I can see it here. And these pens, you have to clean them every so often. And then I need a really thin line. I could use my ballpoint pen, but this one might give me a thin line. And you can just use your 0.1 pigment liner. There, that's a nice thin line. So I've got three weights of line here. And my goal is to turn this sofa into a silhouette of a sofa so that I read it immediately as a sofa. So just, so this is for my outside lines. And this is for accent on the inside. Uh, on inside. And this is for um, inside lines. So I've given you three options for you yourself. You can use um, this from the Prismacolor marker box. And you also have pigment liners that would do this job those two intermediate lines. But when I start, I would outline everything with my thinnest marker first before I went back in and heavied everything up. It gives you a chance to practice making these shapes because there are still some shapes here, even though we're using the ruler for most of it, there are still some shapes here that you're going to need to draw by hand. Has anyone any questions so far? So just know that you're not going to be taping a paper over top. You are going to be working right on your template. So just draw your sofas in blue pencil. Uh, do we need to, oh, sorry. Yeah. Do we need yeah. to draw the person too? 
Apart. Yes, of course. Yes, you can do all three. So you know what, Janissa, make sure that you often consult the self-evaluation paper. Because that's okay. gonna, yeah. yeah, that'll okay. remind you everything you need to do. Because I've been getting surprises, not from you particularly, but uh, uh, just generally, I've been getting some surprises. Okay, so now I'm gonna start. Oh, I thought that would help, but it's not. I don't want it to move. So I'm gonna start here on my sofa, and I'll just I'll just draw everything. That's the thing about this first pen, my lightest pen. I can just draw everything. And if there's things in my drawing that need to be improved, the black pen, when you're not putting an overlay on, but the black pen is your chance to improve your drawing. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a uh, tracing paper at home. Do you know uh, the best place to find tracing paper, like staples or? Um, an art store would be best. Now you don't need tracing paper for this. Oh, we don't, okay. No. Oh, so it's just the template. It's not the actual, like, like what you're doing. No, I'm doing this because I already have ink lines on my drawing. Okay. And this isn't tracing paper, this is marker paper. Oh, is it? Yeah. So I don't want anybody doing this. This is just, should I stop doing this? Is everyone gonna think you're gonna do this? Maybe I shouldn't do this. I thought we were doing what you were doing, like using the marker paper over our template. Oh, okay. That's just for practice, right? Okay. You're not doing this for the assignment. Oh, no, 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 not for the assignment, yeah. Okay, okay, as long as everybody knows that you're not do, doing this for the assignment. This is just for in class because my drawing, I already put black lines, so I can't show you the line technique. Um, so should we be following along with you right now or just uh, watching? It's up to you. If you've got a drawing from last week, you can do that. That would be great. You don't want to draw this on one of your templates, though, because you need all three. So what I'm doing now on this overlay is just putting in all of the all of my lines. And then later, I can make a decision on what ones I, and I'm leaving little gaps as well. I'm not putting the line everywhere. I leave little gaps. So later on, I can go back. Now, I want to take opportunities to put double lines anywhere I can. So I'm going to put a double line on the front here, because there's got to be some sort of piping or some sort of um, at this plane change, there would be some something like that going on. And this is round because it's a round sofa. A round cushion. And yeah, so this is just for practice. I'm so worried now that everybody's going to be drawing on marker paper rather than drawing three templates. And it's worth 15 marks. So if you only draw one template and trace it, then you're going to be out a lot of marks, 10 marks. So please don't do that. Please make the effort to draw all three templates three times. And the reason I'm asking you to do that once again is because it's going to make such a stark and startling difference when we work next week and we start working with a grid. I mean, after the break. Next week, uh, we're going to do. Mm -hmm. so are all the three templates identical to each other or are they like different 
Or... No, they're the same. The okay. sofas are different, but the templates are the same. Okay. But, but every one of them turns out a little bit different. Okay, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for your questions, everybody. This is really helpful. And you can turn your page as well. So once you get the templates in and the sofas drawn, it's pretty easy after that. You just have to concentrate on your line. I should have just drawn my sofa in blue pencil last week. I'm kicking myself now for not having done that. So even without trying, my line weights are a bit different, aren't they? So it's, you've got to just keep your eye on what you're doing. I'm just going to put a little bit there and here because there's a plane change here. It'll be easier for you to do this. I found it much easier to do this over my template because on the template, it's already yelling. So you have to yell a little harder with your black line in order for that to be seen. So that's essentially everything is traced now with my same weight of line. So I begin there, but I do it on my template, not on here. And for her, I do the same thing and see if I couldn't improve her. So this would be just what I just did. It'd be that. So I don't know if I need to do that again, but we might as well. I know all of you perfectionists are thinking, oh, but that looks so much better than leaving it on the template. You know who you are. Why don't we do that with all of them? No. We have to leave it as a, because if you do a concept booklet, I'm hoping you get to do a concept booklet. And this is what concept books, booklets look like. They look like this. They look like someone who's thinking on the spot and putting their thing, whole thing together really fast so that it can get to the client immediately. That's what concept books. They're, they're gorgeous. They're usually beautiful. You throw your marker on really fast and it looks alive and it feels that makes the viewer feel more alive as well. They're really very exciting concept booklets. So maybe you'll get to do one. I hope so. And so I won't spend a lot of time on her. I think I'll focus mostly on the sofa. So you saw how I what I did with her. So let's go back to the sofa. So that's my first weight of line, as you recall. That's my first weight. Now I've got an accent line, but I'm gonna do my outside line first, and then I'll see where I need accents. So I think I might put a piece of paper underneath this. I'm just going to slide a piece of paper underneath this so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so there's my, everything's the same. Now I'm going to go with my fat pen. And I'm going to try to do the same weight of line everywhere. And I keep turning my page, so. Oh, I have to use my leader. but I'm not going to fix it. You can do a little fixing up with your white pen if you need to. Because that should be rounder and I've made it pointy for some reason.
So you see, now you can see the contrast. It would be better, it's gonna be better for you when you do this right on your template because you'll have your vanishing point right there. I don't have mine anymore and I'm missing it. Now this is the tricky part. I've got to try and keep this the same way all the way around. Might as well do the other one at the same time. I've got an arm's way length, an arm's length away from this, so it's a little bit tricky. Then you want your head right over the thing to draw. Now this time though, on the bottom, I'm not gonna cut across the legs. I'm gonna leave them and do this. And I don't know if that's gonna work. Yeah, I think it does. I'm just gonna leave it like that and then I'll outline your legs. Now, what's exciting is that you're going to need to apply this because none of those sofas look like this. So you're just going to have to take the directive of putting your thicker outside lines, thinner inside lines, take that directive and apply it. So just like everything else, when we work in class, I'm introducing the ideas, but you really learn how to use these things when you do the homework. So there'll still be questions, you'll still have things to answer. So I'm gonna put a little bit of an accent. Now I have my accent pen. That's my, my accent pen. I have to be careful though. I just wanna bring some of this forward because this is at the front. I'm not gonna fill in much of it. I want most of the inside to be light. I don't want it to be heavy. But this is in the foreground, so I don't mind putting that in. And keep leaning back so you can see the effect of what you're doing. I think I'll put a thin line here. And the temptation is to go in and do that. Don't do that though, because that's far away. These are things that are close, so it makes sense to give them a little more weight. And then I'd be finished with that. I wouldn't add any more. Although what I can do is add, you know, these lines, they make the cushion look softer. Since we drew the whole thing with a set square, that kind of helps to just make it look a little softer. And if I needed to, I could clean up the edges a little bit. I made this pointy for some reason. Now, if we were doing our shading, I suppose I could take this back a little bit, just a little bit there. If we were doing our patching, our shading, then this would look more appropriate, but we're not ready for that yet. We're just gonna stop here with this. And then next time we'll use the hatching. Okay, now then the next lines I would outline, and I would use maybe my intermediate line for this. I'll see how it goes. I may need my bolder line, but outline your room.
Well, maybe I better finish with her. I'm going to use my intermediate line for her. Because if I don't, she's going to look like a misfit, isn't she? So she's got to be. Keep bringing this leg over so it becomes your the leg where she puts her weight on. Oops, shouldn't have happened there. We don't want to draw her to draw very much attention, so. And this idea of doing something a second time, the thin line, then the thick line, is good because it gives you a chance to correct your drawing. And now this is too wide and that's too thin or one or the other's wrong. So that's a little off. Oh, take that head. She looks like she has a pail on her head. But she's behaving herself. That's the main thing. She just has to behave herself. So even though you drew lines for your wall, they're not going to be strong enough. So you can use your intermediate line, or you could even use your uh, punch line marker for this part, because we need to see the whole room. Now, we'd have to take a second look and see if she's looking too thin or too, she is causing a, a distraction because she's isolated and she's not the same weight. So we might have to make her a little thicker. I just have a question. You know the white pen you're using? Is that the oil-based Sharpie pen? Because I saw those at Walmart, but I didn't know if I should get them or not, if it was the correct one. Um, it should be the um, water-based. Water-based? Okay, thank you. Did they have the water-based one? I didn't see that. I only saw the oil-based, and I, I didn't know if I should get that because like oily would be a glossy, I guess. Um, my only thought was that it, if you put it over some of these markers, I'm not sure how it would. It's worth a try. I tell you, they are brilliant. It's worth a try. Yeah. And and they're not too expensive. I don't. I don't even remember what I paid for this, but. Do you know where you got it from? I got it from Above Ground Art Supplies. Mm, uh, where do you live? I live in Windsor, so I have stayed. Oh. And um, that's it. <laughs> do they have curries? No, they don't. I wonder if Staples would have it. Do you have a Staples? You do, because you bought your sketchbook there. Yeah, I, I will check at Staples, but online it doesn't show a lot of inventory. Because uh, of it, so that's kind of a bummer. Can you phone the store? It's impossible because they're like, oh, if it's an online order, then we help you. Like, um, you have to go online, but if you put an order in, then you can just alter it something like that but um i'll try to find it somehow i have some friends in toronto who maybe i can ask talk into going and getting it yeah and then they can just like mail it to me you know yeah they'll have to they have to order it online 
and then they'll have to go and pick it up curbside or they'll deliver it to them. So it's complicated in any which way you go. Yeah. And it takes them, it takes them about a, but you know what is really good too, and this is at Staples, are these Pentel correction pens. Okay. They're like they're, the whiteouts, right? Sorry? They're like the whiteouts? Yeah, but they're they're really good. They have a lot of stuff in them. And they don't bleed like this one over a marker. They will cover it up without bleeding. But okay. I just, yeah. I like, oh, 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 I lost my book. Oh no, that was such a good marker too. It's gone into the, see this covers that right up. This is very good too. Oh, now I've lost my marker. That was just the best marker. In my setup, there's no retrieval of anything that falls down the hole. Oh, I found it. Okay. This is a good day, I should buy a lottery ticket. So this takes a little time to dry. That doesn't blur any of the markers, so. That was my biggest issue because um, the whiteout, um, it takes time to dry. And then while you're like trying to do something else, I always tend to hit it with my hand or my arm. And oh. then that sucks for me. So, but the marker um, we got with the, with the kit, it's, it's better, it dries quite faster, but I think, I feel like we have to do a lot of layers to cover like a black line. Yes. Um, it just makes it gray and then you have to keep going. You know what? Um, you have white gouache in your kit. White gouache? Is that like paint? White paint, or you have acrylic gouache. So I don't know if that's the same. I don't know. I didn't get all of my kit. I didn't get any of the paint, so I'm not sure. Okay, so you don't have to. Yeah. But I'll try the the one that you said right now. Um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty good. Yeah. So that's it for the. Oh, thank you for your question, because everybody's wondering. I know what about supplies. So. Is there any more word on when the rest of the supplies are coming? No. We were fortunate that you got so many of the ones that we use. We were really pretty lucky. We didn't luck out in terms of the sketchbook but we found substitutes and I'm I'm so grateful to all of you who did that. Now for the little floor plan I'd do it the same way. I'd start out with my finest line. And then I would switch to my thicker pen after I've got this all mapped out. Now I hope that you're um, being careful to not pass over a line just after you made it. I'm not, but I'm hoping you are <laughs> because it will smear. So you have to be careful about that. Let it dry a little bit. It's better on the sketchbook paper. It's really difficult on the marker paper. So once again, everybody, you're not doing this. I'm doing this because my drawing was so full of black last week. I did it that way. I shouldn't have. I should have done white blue pencil that I had no other choice if I was going to show you anything but to do it this way. So I would outline my floor plan with the finest pen first, put a medium weight line around the box. But you see the sofa is standing out the most and because she's standing beside the sofa, she's getting a little bit of um, play as well. And then you go back with your thick pen on this poor little floor plan and 
go in and heavy up the outside. And then you put accents with your middle line, your middle weight line on the inside. So one thing I want to do is show that this back is higher than the seat. So I'll make that a little bit thicker here. So the back is, and I have to make this a little bit. So that's not thick enough. So the back is thicker. And I want to show this is a little bit rounded. Maybe this, because it's the same distance from us in a floor plan. And this is the, the side here. So this is the actual place where the cushion meets the arm. So I just want to round those out and accent them a little bit. But this part doesn't have accent. There. So that would be the little floor plan in there. Oh, oh, I need that dirty. Now, at the drugstore, you can get isopropyl alcohol, get the 99%. And this is great for cleaning your set squares and T squares and everything, and your hands if you're as messy as I am, while you're working so that you don't transfer this onto your drawing. It will clean up everything. So you just wipe it off like this. Woo! Don't put your hand on it just after you wipe, though. You have to come back. So this is it. You have, go with your thin line first. I'll read on the template, not on an overlay. And then you go back and you heavy up where you need to heavy up on the outside. So essentially all I did was heavy up the outside, left the inside thin, and accented the parts that were closer to me with the, th the second pen. 